Welcome again to Poetry of Immigrants. We're delighted to be here. It's December 27th, so we're on the downside. Our energy has changed, which is wonderful, because we're going to read you some gentle poetry. But first of all, we're going to celebrate Santa and also a cup of tea, a cup of joe, a, a cup of kindness. And um, we hope you get those memories back as we read some of the verse. What's your most salient, powerful, early Christmas memory when you felt for the first time the magic of the season? I think waking up on Christmas morning and coming downstairs and just seeing the glow of the Christmas tree and all the gifts as a young child. You came downstairs. Did you have a chimney in that house? I believe we did. <laughs> did you have stockings hanging on? Yes, we did. Oh, isn't that wonderful? That's very traditional. Um, I remember uh, the escalator in G. Fox and Company in Hartford climbing to the 11th floor, and suddenly there was this a light, an illumination of the animated elf orchestra. And I never forgot that. It was just so indelible. Well, um, <laughs> Christmas has so much wonderful, wonderful tradition in it. And also, we have uh, a cultural awareness of how our Christmas works. And also, Christmas is around the world. For example, in Russia, the secular uh, saint is Dadya Maros, Father Frost. They also have St. Nicholas, of course. Um, and our Santa is quite the guy. And Really, he owes a lot to Norman Rockwell. <laughs> um, this is uh, the morning after. There's always a morning after, isn't there? Yes, there is. Do you remember believing in Santa? Yes, I do. Do you remember the time you found the beard and the costume? behind the big chair, or? No. No. I don't. It just faded. I still believe in the magic of Santa. Absolutely. I still do. And the spirit I of Santa. I still do. That's Absolutely. the point. Absolutely. Absolutely. I still do. So the spirit of Santa is love? It's in your heart. It's in it's, your heart. It's love, it's kindness, it's joy. It's all. all it's all encompassing. Above. How wonderful. <laughs> um, Norman Rockwell did a wonderful job with this. <laughs> if you can see, the young boy's holding the beard. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, this way. There we go. So, let's follow the spirit of Santa with some poems. I want to introduce, first of all, my very special guest, Julie Campbell, who's just 500 to 1,000 yards down the road. Uh, Julie's Cafe, Coffee Shop, Cup of Joe. And also, our theme for today is um, Cup of Kindness. Thank you. I just finished this book, which was a New York Times bestseller, Three Cups of Tea. And uh, I would call him a modern day Santa. Still alive, still traveling around the world, doing wonderful things. He's the gentleman who tried to climb K2 in the Himalayas. 
and failed, but because of his circuitous route of uh, trying to find uh, helpers, Sherpas, he got into the culture and uh, noticed, wait a minute, these children don't have schools. And this is northern, extreme northern Pakistan, and also uh, northern Afghanistan along that troubled border there. Um, so he ended up uh, fundraising for 10 years, finding backers, and he's built uh, about 51 girls' schools in Pakistan. The boys are normally in that culture sent to school, uh, and the girls were studying outside. So 15 years later, Greg Mortensen is a, a modern-day Santa with the spirit of love and giving, and uh, is an American hero. So Santa, in many ways, is fully alive. <laughs> I just love the book, um, and I recommend it. He's also uh, active in other countries now, so one man can make a difference, or one woman. Yes. Yes. Okay or one child. So, poetry of immigrants. We're all immigrants, and we're grateful to be here. Um, I'd like to start with an old standard. I think I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree. A tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast. A tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray. A tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair, upon whose bosom now snow has lain, who intimately lives with rain. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. Joyce Kilmer, that's probably the best known poem in the American language by an American poet. Very interesting. It's very nice. Isn't that lovely? Very nice. Lovely. Um, I have another short one called The Owl. But first I'll read the other famous American poem, which is a song for Christmas. Um, it's unknown. <laughs> Many of these poets are unknown. I saw three ships. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day. On Christmas Day, I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day in the morning. We know the tune, right? Mm -hmm. Pray, whither sailed those ships all three on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day? Pray, whither sailed those ships all three on Christmas Day in the morning? We have our sailboat, mm -hmm. which is our moniker. And we all came over on the boat, some generations past. Oh, they sailed into Bethlehem on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. Oh, they sailed into Bethlehem on Christmas Day in the morning. And all the bells on earth shall ring on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. And all the bells on earth shall ring on Christmas Day in the morning. And all the angels in heaven shall sing on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. And all the angels in heaven shall sing on Christmas Day in the morning. And all the souls on earth shall sing on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. And all the souls on earth shall sing on Christmas Day in the morning. So poetry really is song. I mean, that's the, the essential connection between poetry and music. How wonderful the lyrics are, standing alone as a written piece, but also. Um, let's hear some haiku, if you're willing. I would love to. Uh, what a wonderful book was gifted to me, Gates of Guilford, um, by a local guy, Lansy Butler, lives in Guilford, creative guy. And uh, he put out visuals with the, yeah. Do you know anything else about him there? 
I am not familiar, but um, I would like to share what a haiku is. For those of you who aren't aware, a haiku is a popular form of Japanese poetry. Haiku poetry usually describes your feelings and reflects on nature. Yes, that's it. And so simple and yet profound. Uh, my kids used to write haikus. They used oh, to really enjoy writing poetry. Tell me about poetry. that. Um, pretty funny. Yeah. Started in the third grade and then it went on from there. But really, really neat little uh, little poems. I enjoyed reading them. That's what I was um, hoping to hear because... I wish I could remember them or had I brought them, but they were very funny. Uh, but Quite. they live in the house yes, in a sense. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. They're, on, they're <laughs> in a frame on a wall because they're so very funny. Oh, poetry lives in the house. It's yeah. great. I selected a couple that spoke to me um, when I think about the holiday season and just the words themselves. Uh, one that I really enjoyed was, it's titled Stripes. White stripes on red stripes paint patriotic visions all over the town. And there is a really neat photo of someone's picket fence, but clearly part of some history in Guilford, which is really kind of neat. That is neat. I have a, I, I like the fence post and it just speaks to me in a, another one about fence, with the fence on it is, is called Unfair. Uh, a strip of pearly whites defend us from the outside are slightly open. So maybe we're thinking about us protecting ourselves and that fence is a way to do that. But it also is slightly open in case I like that. Somebody wants to stick them in. And that's Robert Frost. You know, good fences make good neighbors. Right. But before I wall on somebody <laughs> in or out, I'd look, like to know why I'm doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last one I really liked just spoke to me, and it's now the almost the end of another year. We're going into a new year. And it's called the welcome sign. The garden within gives children a place to play fantasy of dreams. So we all have that garden in our hearts, we do. that place that it's a special place. It gives us a place to play <laughs> and have some dreams. And have some dreams. Thank you. Oh, Great book. You're welcome. I'm hoping to share it with you for um, another return visit. <laughs> this one, <laughs> this one sparked me. Do you see the Z? Yes, I do. Isn't yes. that great? It is really neat. And the title is Z. Mm -hmm. And it's in front of what looks like that uh, duplex on Waters. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Trapped within a Z-ish spell, a life concealed and hidden well. Tragic secrets twist the truth and trust becomes the norm for pride and lust. Wow, mm -hmm. that's the dark side. <laughs> and next to it, gargoyle. There are two little teeny mm -hmm. gargoyles mm -hmm. <laughs> perched on. Uh, garbled and mean, you resign your fate to guard this province from all who hate. Caged within, your ire appears, imprisoned by time and riddled with fears. Echoes of laughter heighten your power, adds to the rage that makes you sour, fuels your aggression by day, and gives you strength in every way. Feeling comfort in the shadow, darkness, your friend, not your foe. Sinister beginnings enshrouded in mystery, reassuring obscurity is your history. Now that's a poet because he has projected into this funny looking headpiece on a, on a fence all of his imaginative creative powers of what that might mean <clears throat> in, in that piece. So the poem is a kind of free flight of imagination, mm. which is really another good definition of poetry. Um, Haikus are popular. Um, it really hit this country by storm. 
And there were riffs on haikus and variations mm -hmm. on haikus and the American version of a haiku. Mm -hmm. But basically what it is is it's a popular form of Japanese poetry. Haiku um, usually has a syntax, consists of three lines of five, seven, and five. So if you write by syllables, haiku is your form. Now, uh, he said, Mr. Butler, Lansy said in a little bio piece that he likes to write and create not by words, but by syllables. I love that because that's something so <coughs> far out of my ken mm -hmm. that's totally new mm -hmm. in terms of composition. 575. The haiku is my favorite form of poetry, compact ideas. Feelings, just an epiphany. Um, and that's the key word for linking all our themes today. Epiphany, mm -hmm. so that would be the epiphany, <coughs> the showing forth of the Christ child, mm -hmm. uh, which is coming up, right? Yes, it is. And epiphany is a very powerful literary term used in creative writing and literature that is a showing forth of a sudden, sharp revelation of truth. But it happens only in common items. Like, you're coming down the stairs, seeing a tree. My going up the escalator, seeing wonder. But they're common items in everyday life, but they show forth, which is epiphany. And they show forth with an illumination of the spirit. And um, James Joyce ran with that, so many modernists did too. So as a literary technique and term, epiphany comes from Christmas and the birth of the Christ child. Um, and I think that links with what a haiku is. It's a kind of a, as you said in the description, a sudden distillation of a feeling or an experience that's just um, five, seven, and five syllables. Mm. How do you get it in? I could never write a, a haiku. <laughs> I couldn't either, but my, uh, your what, kids what did. Could and it just fascinated me. Um, and w they were all humorous. Oh gosh, yes. And so precious, you put them up on the wall. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> they're hysterical. They're hysterical. You have to. I mean, just to think about whatever they were thinking. Yeah. And they were really clued into the 575. That was really, Isn't that amazing? and they could think about 57 and 5 like that. <laughs> think about words with that many syllables just. By just yeah. doing the syllables. Just and their brain working. And back to the third grade, really. So that says a lot about schools, poetry in the schools, mm -hmm. and also um, a way to introduce creative writing and art. Oh, it's wonderful. It's the school, wonderful. It, it, Westbrook does a phenomenal job with the writing and the curriculum that they, the children read. I'm really glad It's been you several that. years since my kids were in school, but it's still, it's served them in so many ways on so many levels. It's really neat, really neat to see. I'm so glad to hear that. That is so yeah. reinforcing. So uh, maybe there's some, uh, Students out there who will catch this show Monday night at 8 o'clock, mm. Channel 19, every Monday night. You're going to be on with me for a whole month because <laughs> we tape only oh. once a month. <laughs> oh. oh, great. Okay. Isn't that great? <laughs> I guess it is. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I missed that. Let's see it oh, next Monday see. night. <laughs> what, what was that? What, did that? what happened? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. And, um, would you like to read a children's story, or is it a poem? If you're talking about this book right here, yes. it is a story. Oh, good. I see it as a story. Great. So this is the house that Jack built, and I'm certain there are many of you out there that are familiar with this book. So, really, really neat all these advertisements for uh, a house that you can pick. 
But this is a very interesting house. This is uh, in no particular order. This is dedicated to Oliver. And then we have all of our players. Uh, the artist, the mystery guest, which you'll be able to see as we go by, as we go on. So this is the house that Jack built. This is the house that Jack built. It's now for sale. It's quite interesting how he built it. This is the cheese <coughs> that lay in the house that Jack built. Just a couple of the cheeses. We have cheddar cheese, pretty smelly. We have some Gouda, some Swiss, American cheese, all time favorite. And here's the sun shining on the house that Jack built. This is the rat, comes with the house. Uh, we have all different kinds of rats. I'll just tell you one, a pack rat. Uh. That ate the cheese that lay in the house that Jack built, the smelly house that Jack built. This is the cat. Felix, we have all different kinds of cats. The Bombay cat, the Cheshire cat, the Halloween cat, my favorite. This is the cat that killed the rat that ate the cheese that lay in the house that Jack built. This is the dog. Uh that worried the cat, that killed the rat, that ate the cheese, that lay in the house that Jack built. This is the cow with the crumpled horn that tossed the dog, that worried the cat, that killed the rat, that ate the cheese, that lay in the house that Jack built. This is the maiden all forlorn that killed the cow with the crumpled horn. Milked. Oh, milk. <laughs> Oops. 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 Maybe that's what, okay. Sorry, kiddos. <laughs> this is the maiden, all forlorn. Because we are not going to eat that cow. <laughs> that milked the cow that, with the crumpled horn, that <laughs> tossed the dog, that worried the cat, that killed the rat, that ate the cheese, that lay in the house that Jack built. Oh, this is the man, all tattered and torn. Looks like he's looking for a job. That kissed the maiden all forlorn. That moved ah, to the cow oh. with a crumpled horn. That tossed the dog. That worried the cat. That killed the rat. That ate the cheese. That lay in the house the jack built. This is the judge all shaven and shorn. Oh, I like him. Look at him. He's Look at his, his scarf hanging down, is that mm -hmm. it? And his pants, very uh, oh. festive. He's festive. I he like is. his I bow think tie. He is. <laughs> that married the man all tattered and torn. That kissed the maiden all forlorn. That milked the cow with the crumpled horn. That tossed the dog, that worried the cat, that killed the rat, that ate the cheese, that lay in the house that Jack built. Can somebody sing this? Was this a, has this ever been a song? I don't know. Because it really clearly sounds like something you would sing. I'm telling you, you're so right on because listen to well, there's the a, 12th day yes, of Christmas exactly. my true love gave to me. It's the same pattern. So this is the rooster yeah. that crowed in the morn, that waked the judge all shaven and shorn, that married the man all tattered and torn, that kissed the maiden all forlorn, that milked the cow with the crumpled horn, that tossed the dog, that worried the cat, that killed the rat, that ate in the house, ate the cheese, that lay in the house that Jack built. <laughs> I'm glad it's you uh, and if not I could, I if, I had good, if I had good pitch, <laughs> I would probably try to sing this like the 12 days of Christmas. Oh, Maybe by the end, I don't try know. One we'll verse. see it, we'll see how I do. <laughs> yeah. This is the farmer planting his corn that kept the rooster that crowed in the morn that waked the judge all shaven and shorn that, tat that married the maiden tattered and torn that kissed the maiden all forlorn that milked the cow with the crumpled horn that tossed the dog that worried the cat that killed the rat that ate the cheese that lay in the house that Jack built. And a partridge in a pear tree. And a partridge in a pear tree, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
And this is the artist who first had drawn. I wondered, I wondered. This is the artist. He first drew all of these really cool things. So there's a little hint here. I'm going to stop and read. Yeah. His name rhymes with forget me not. Hmm. Hmm. See if you can figure it out. Well, that's not. So this is the artist who first had drawn a okay. picture of the farmer planting his corn that kept the rooster that crowed in the morn that waked the judge all shaven and shorn that married the man all tattered and torn, that kissed the maiden all forlorn, that milked the cow with the crumpled horn, that tossed the dog, that worried the cat, that killed the rat, that ate the cheese, that lay in the house that Jack built. Wow. This is the house that Jack built. A favorite rhyme for children for several centuries was first published in 1755 and probably derived from an ancient Hebrew chant in the 16th century, and it was illustrated by Randolph Caldecott in 1878. Caldecott, Caldecott. is that the Caldecott Book, of, book um, Award? Is there a book I award or something? I would bet on Caldecott I, yeah. as the big name. Because now you see that, that that's an award. Oh, that's fantastic. That's kind of neat. Connection. I did not know that. <gasps> and someone bought it because it sold. And there's the smelly cheese. Coming out the window. Yep, because it smells great. Oh, you did a awesome beautiful story. job. Well, thank you very much. Oh. Besides almost killing the hurting cow. The, killing yeah. the cow. But you know what? <laughs> that was marvelous. <laughs> thank you. Because thank you. Thank you. you read it with such feeling and joy. <laughs> thank you. That's everything. Yeah. Thank you. Now, I would have confused in my <laughs> reading so far beyond that. Um, we wouldn't have been able to continue. <laughs> We'd oh, okay. be laughing oh, okay. so hard. Right. So, so I guess it was a good thing I was It was reading. a good thing. It was a <laughs> good. really good thing. Good. But you noticed also how the rhythm connects them all. Mm -hmm. It's the 12 days of Christmas. Yes, it is. It's just wonderful. Oh. Well, um, we are going to open some presents. Mm -hmm. I love presents. We can't mm -hmm. wait. No. I love presents. We cannot <clears throat> wait. Oh my. This will be a great bridge from first part of the show to the last part. After the break, we'll be checking out what's in the stockings. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned or come back. With newspapers and media outlets merging all over the country, communities are losing their local voice. There's so much going on in the community that I think does, doesn't really, uh, there's a lot of folks who are unaware of it. And I think things like this can bring it out into the community and in that way kind of bring the community together. Information and to our residents is the key to good governance. And with the national media and local media not often covering us, this is an excellent opportunity for us constantly to communicate with our constituents and, and also to have them communicate with us. The best outcomes will be achieved through a community-based organization that grows its operation and scale by means of locally produced programming. All of our content is volunteer produced, so we do shows from talk shows to music shows, uh, working with high schools. VSCTV is committed to ensuring that the investment made to secure these powerful tools will pay great dividends in the community for many, many years. calls me googly eyes. And you know you're beautiful, right? You know that? Even you are beautiful. I got bullied for wearing glasses. Share if you're against bullying. We put it out there, just took off. Three million people have shared this post. Don't let bullies get you down. I stand with you. The whole family's wearing glasses. I wear glasses and I'm proud. I even have the army on my team. All the kind comments brought my child joy. I don't feel thank you is enough. Thanks. Hey, 
Hey, let's check out this park. Find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. I know how to get there. Trust me. I mean, hello. Everybody knows the way. See, we're here. Like, it took, what, 10 minutes? Oh. Ma'am, are you okay? Uh, yeah. Oh. Need to let go of a few things? Drop them off at Goodwill. We're on your way to just about anywhere. house <laughs> but we're first we're going to tie the first part of the show and the second with Norman Rockwell again he's really the originator of modern secular Christmas in America the ways in which Americans celebrate Christmas and the imagery associated with it are almost entirely the products of the mass media for which Rockwell worked. Santa Claus, for example, grew from the archaic, quote, right jolly old elf of Clement Moore's 1822 poem. And he grew into the fat, avuncular, full-sized wonder worker of modern times under the auspices of Harper's Magazine. In the pages of Harper's, beginning in 1863, political cartoonist Thomas Nast reimagined Santa for a rising generation of girls and boys who looked in store windows, oh yeah, for the very latest in toys, and eventually told Santa all about them on a newfangled telephone. Oh, Santa, bring me. Oh, but he didn't always come through. <laughs> so you have to really have a creative imagination to go with what Santa brings you. <laughs> <laughs> what did Santa bring you today? What did Santa bring me? Oh. Oh, he brought me a nursery rhyme book. Oh, one of these great little board books. Isn't these are that great? Would your Do you um, three-year-old nephew? I think he might. Oh, that'd be great. I think he might. Yeah, can you read it? Yes. This is a good old classic, Hickory Dickory Dock. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one. The mouse ran down. Hickory dickory dock. And have you heard that rhythm before somewhere? Yes, yes. In fact, I was going to I I was I was going to say the the rhyme a little bit different, but I decided to read the words. Oh. Cuz we all say, I mean, we all know these rhymes. We do. But we do. sometimes what happens is we start saying them, maybe we heard somebody else say it. That's true. And I think the one that really comes to mind for me is um, the old man snoring. Um, it's raining, it's pouring. Yes, yes. The old, now, I remember it as, it's raining, it's pouring, the old man is snoring. He went to bed and he bumped his head and he couldn't get up in the morning. Uh -huh. But 
my question has always been, our kids have talked about it, did he go to bed because he bumped his head? Oh. Or did he bump his head on the way to bed? Oh. It's, it's, it's just a really, when you think about the, yes. the rhyme itself, uh, I think we probably all have a little different answer. It, we, or it's one or the other. It'd be interesting oh. to, what's your, what, what, are you, what do you think? I think. Do you remember it? <clears throat> I do think, and I remember, and your kids put you through your paces. <laughs> they were so bright. They asked you all these questions. Yes, oh, Mama. We used to sing it yeah. and sing it, and oh. then I'd say, "Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Did he bump his head on the? Well, just to get them think. You know, just to get kids thinking. So just reading something for the sake of reading it. Let's think about it. I remember. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one, and the rest ran away with minor injuries. Oh, down he. Down, okay. Yeah. yeah. But my point is, would you guess that that is the pattern of an Irish limerick? Yes, I, I, now that you say it, I would. Isn't I, that I, wonderful? Just, yeah, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect yeah, sense. Yeah. The same rhythm pattern. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> think about it. Every, everything we read or everything. Uh, that's written, it, it all has a pattern. All has a pattern. Mm. And um, that's music, but that's also poetry. Mm -hmm. um, and then along came free verse, and that's the one for the mouse who ran away. <laughs> who got away uh, unharmed. Yes. Unharmed. Unharmed. What else is in there? Let's see. By the way, I want to say oh, look. something about Santa. Okay. Santa, beyond the secular version and the Harper's Magazine and Jackson, or uh, Jackson Pollock, that's, that's a slip, <laughs> that painter. Um, mm. Santa really is uh, a cultural construct, but the thing about Santa, beyond believing in the spirit of love, is that he's really um, conversant with and in so many different cultures of the world. Mm. I started to say, well, he's Tiaja Maros in Russian, but he's also slightly different to each child in every country around the world. Has a different dress. Well, depending on their traditions. Depending on their traditions. And that's the beauty of Santa, mm -hmm. you know, and the analog being uh, on the religious plane. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of individual religion in the culture and the tradition of the country. It's a marvelous yes, parallel. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's just wonderful to think about that. But it's the same spirit of love. Mm -hmm. It's the same cup of tea yes. and cup of joe, which is really a cup of kindness. It's, it's spreading that kindness and that joy. It is. And the warmth. And the warmth. Mm -hmm. And it's a great metaphor uh, for poetry, certainly. Um, that is such a wonderful little find because it's so glittery. <laughs> what is your nephew, um, your nephew's name? Zane. 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 And he's three. He's three. He's my great nephew, actually. Great nephew. Mm -hmm. And he's magical yeah, right now. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> Lucky you. Yeah, I'm so awesome. happy. It's really neat. Yeah. yeah. It's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. So what's in your stocking? Let's see. <clears throat> Santa uh -oh. is. Were you good this year? Yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I was not naughty. And Santa oh, cool. came through because what I like to do is hang ornaments on the window mm -hmm. because the cat likes the, mm -hmm. the motion mm -hmm. and also the changing lights mm -hmm. and sparkles. Oh, I just love these things. Oh, my favorite pickup on the beach. Ah, oh, yeah. It's mm -hmm. like a little toot toot. A little piece of driftwood. Yeah. yeah, and like a little. Is it heavy? No, no it's, it's like a little tugboat. Right, and it's been tossed in the water. It has. And, and look it, at the beauty, it's still in it, so it just goes to show we can be tossed and it'll turn out. We can be tossed. Beautiful. Yeah. And, and through it all, we come out. Mm -hmm. And this, isn't this cute with the little It does look like a, it really does look like a tugboat. <laughs> <laughs> Nature really does. is the best artist. It's awesome. Yeah. I walk that beach and I'm stunned. 
There were four shelves mm -hmm. that just put together just right, mm -hmm. which stood on its own. Mm -hmm. Magnificent. It's beautiful. Nature is. If you can see, it's it's a gift to be able to see it. It's a gift to be able to see it. If you can see. It's a yeah, gift to be able to see it. That's the trick, that's isn't it? it? Not really a trick, but yeah. It's yeah. It uh, it's the gift of being able to see, right? And this was, believe it or not, in front of the Westbrook Library. Oh, yes, I picked up right. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it's beautiful. Oh, this is so beautiful. Great reminder at the end of the year. Yeah. You are loved. Mm -hmm. No matter what. No matter how tossed and turned you are <laughs> in the rough seas mm -hmm. of life. Um, so we're speaking metaphorically in many ways, mm -hmm. which is yes, the power of poetry. Mm -hmm. It covers so much ground. Um, this just sitting there in front of the Westbrook Library saying to every passerby, remember, you are loved. And they put this little glowing mm -hmm. butterfly, <clears throat> which is also a symbol of transcendence, eternal life. Mm -hmm. So poetry works not only in form, music, rhythm, and meter, it works in figurative language, metaphors, similes. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there's a controlling metaphor which keeps the whole poem together, mm -hmm. like um, Frost poem, The Silken Tent. She is as a silken tent. In other words, the woman of the house is the center cedar pole mm -hmm. and keeps the tent together. Um, and that controls the whole sonnet, mm -hmm. 14 lines of sonnet. It's beautiful. Poetry is just magical for me. It goes with the season. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. <laughs> um, do you have anything else in there? I, I actually do. That would be fun to find out. <laughs> All right, let's see. I think I'd like to try and see if I know what it is. Oh, that's fun, it. yeah. Oh, look at that, Santa Sailor. Isn't that great? So Santa has many costumes, many mm -hmm. forms. Yes, He's he does. He comes to us in many different ways. In many different many ways. Many different ways. The sea. There's one. I just love his beard. Yeah, it's great. Oh, and that sailor hat. He's like the captain's hat. Mm -hmm. He is. And there he Another is. Another thing to hang in the window for yeah. the cat, right? <laughs> right. Oh, here we go. There's another nice little, uh, is he a polar bear? He is. He is a polar bear with a Santa hat on. Yeah. and it's Everybody wants of, to be Santa. One of Santa's helpers. Mm-hmm. With his tree. And I have one last I wonder thing. what's at the bottom one of that sock one. stuffed in the toe. Stuffed what in the toe. What could that be? I hope it's not coal. No, it's not a I piece of coal. I hope it's not coal. Or an orange. Oh, look. Oh, look at it. It's a dreidel. It's a and dreidel. It's a tr oh, and it's got treats inside. We won't open it, but. What is a dreidel? A dreidel is, um, I know it is a symbol of the of Hanukkah. Okay. And the Jewish faith. And they spin it. They um, spin it, yes. We used to have one. I think at school they used to, you know, uh, the kids would bring them home and they would come home with a game. Oh, they were. Well, it was a great way to teach people that don't celebrate Hanukkah what Hanukkah is about. And because we all, I mean, we don't just want to know one. But well, yeah. I don't know if he'll, will it spin? It might spin. All right. All right. And there's a little song, right? Dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. There is a little song. I made it out of clay, dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. Uh, I'm not doing it any justice. I'm sorry if I don't know all the words, but no, I right. do remember that there's a song, and you spin it, and there's an object to actually playing the game. Um, I don't I, think it says on here. I only okay. knew that um, a dreidel is associated with Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. Now, Hanukkah came really early this year. Yes, beginning. So I think it was the second or third. Yeah, it was very early. Um, I wish I knew about more about other traditions like Kwanzaa, mm -hmm. which are we've probably only been hearing about, probably been around for centuries, but 
it's but just talked recent, about more, yeah. more and more. There you go. <laughs> All right. And the song I remember too. Right. But not much more. So. All right. That's really neat. I'd like to point out uh, in another tradition, hmm. uh, the poet Rumi, who is a 12th century Persian poet. And um, he has always been popular among poets, certainly. But um, for me, about four years ago, I uh, discovered him. And uh, Coleman Barks is his translator. And he has several books out about Rumi's life. But every time I read a quote from Rumi, I feel the spiritual content mm -hmm. that's powerful in it. Now, here's another take on the Christmas season, which is very interesting. When I run after what I think I want, my days are a furnace of stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. If I sit in my own place of patience, what I need flows to me and without pain. From this, I understand that what I want also wants me, is looking for me and attracting me. There is a great secret here for anyone who can grasp it. There is. There is. There is a great secret. And it's come to me more and more in my 70s, mm -hmm. where I realize that the wisdom of life really is an acceptance, in opening up, in um, offering really any gift I have to share. Just being present. Just being present. Just being present. And Rumi is good for that. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm actually gonna look into it. I'd like to read some more of his stuff. I love that. It's uh, just. Yeah. It just so speaks to. So I can relate to it, and I would imagine if people are in the right place, they could also relate to it. I would think so. Mm. In the right place. Yeah. Um, it it kind of spells. Oh, that's me. I do that. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, it, so yeah. it may cause somebody to mm -hmm. maybe be a little hard on themselves, but to really take it to heart and just think everything you need, you already have. It's right in front of you. And that is such a powerful spiritual message, which is, I think, um, cross all religious lines, too. Mm -hmm. So, a cup of joe, three cups of tea. Um, as a metaphor, um, it's fascinating how once we realize that Santa has been everywhere, now that we're on the backside mm -hmm. of Christmas, we're going downhill with the energy. Rumi's perfect for this mm -hmm. time. It's like reflection, opening up an acceptance. Um, I'd like to read a, f a few passages that capture Again, cross-culturally, mm -hmm. because Santa is, has such a high cultural IQ. He mm -hmm. knows mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, from which culture there are commonalities mm -hmm. to go around. And this, this is a fascinating um, development for me. When I read this book, which I could not put down, um, First of all, the generosity, spiritual generosity of this fellow is what captivated me uh, and motivated me to do more volunteering. But um, to play with the metaphor that really is the controlling figure of speech for the whole story here, he wrote this. He's an American. He's very goal-oriented. Mm -hmm. He wants to accomplish objective after objective after objective, but on his timeline. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that when you cross national boundaries. More importantly, you can't do that when you cross cultural mm -hmm. boundaries. Um, and Santa's surely aware of that. <laughs> um, he gets a lesson 
from one of his helpers that he says is the, the heart of the book and the heart of his life story. And here it is. And it's through the ritual of serving tea. And the three cups are significant. When the porcelain bowls of scalding butter tea steamed in their hands, Haji Ali spoke, and this is his mentor, the elder of the village, who's uh, smoothing the way for him to accomplish his miracles of building schools for girls in Afghanistan. Quote, if you want to thrive in Baltistan, that's a region there, you must respect our ways. End quote. Haji Ali said, blowing on his bowl, the first time you share tea with a Balti, you are a stranger. The second time you take tea, you are an honored guest. The third time you share a cup of tea, you become family. And for our family, we are prepared to do anything, even die. He said, laying his hand warmly on Mortensen's own. Dr. Gregg, you must take time to share three cups of tea. Hmm. We may be uneducated, but we are not stupid. We have lived and survived here for a long time. That day, and this is Mortensen speaking, Haji Ali taught me the most important lesson I've ever learned in my life, end quote, Mortensen says. Quote, we Americans think you have to accomplish everything quickly. We're the country of 30-minute power lunches and two-minute football drills. Our leaders thought that their, quote, shock and awe campaign could end the war in Iraq before it even started. Haji Ali taught me to share three cups of tea, to slow down, to make building relationships as important as building projects. He taught me that I had more to learn from the people I work with than I ever could ever hope to learn, hope to teach them. And the rest is a series of schools for girls in Afghanistan and, and then across the border, Pakistan, and on and on and on. What a wonderful summation mm. of a whole book. <clears throat> um, poems tend to have that, that kernel, but this is his epiphany. This is, uh, he, he actually had help writing his um, editor and co-writer, David Oliver Rellin, um, is a brilliant writer, which is, uh, I think, partially the reason the book was so mm -hmm. successful. The imagery, mm -hmm. the wonderful imagery. So, we are now at the point of uh, distilled wisdom <laughs> of the day. I'd like to read a short poem about an owl. And I always turn to the back of a book first. Kind of an idiosyncratic habit, mm -hmm. but um, not that I always read from the back to the front, <laughs> but in poetry anthologies, I like to um, see what the best uh, is to offer in terms of distilled wisdom. And uh, I also look first for animal poems poems about animals and nature. And that's the same thing I did here when I, when I looked at this book. The best love poems of the American people. And I found uh, a couple of poems about a cat, but it was a little, I don't know, a little too uh, ambivalent. I don't feel ambivalent about my cat, Finn. <laughs> um, my dog. 
I have no dog, but it must be somewhere there, ones belonging to me, a little chap with wagging tail and dark brown eyes that never quail, but look you through and through and through with love unspeakable and true. Just don't you see those brown eyes? Mm. Do you have pets at home? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Somewhere it must be. So here's someone opining for a, a pet dog. Somewhere it must be, I opine. There is a little dog of mine with cold black nose that sniffs around in search of what things may be found in pocket or some nook hard by where I have hid them from his eye. I think every child dreams of that personal pet. Somewhere my doggy pulls and tugs the fringes of rebellious rugs, or with the mischief of the pup chews all my shoes and slippers up, and when he's done, to the core with eyes all eager pleads for more. Somewhere upon his hinder legs, my little doggy sits and begs, and in a wistful minor tone, pleads for the pleasures of the bone. <laughs> I pray it be his owner's whim to yield and grant the name to him. Somewhere a little dog doth wait, it may be by some garden gate, with eyes alert and tail attent. You know the kind of tail that's meant, with stores of yelps and glad delight to bid me welcome home at night. Somehow I picture Santa and the little dog at the mm. hearth. <laughs> Somewhere a little dog is seen, his nose two shaggy paws between, flat on his stomach, one eye shut, held fast in dreamy slumber, but the other open, ready for his master coming through the door. John Kendrick Bangs. Thank you. My cat teaches me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wrap. <clears throat> Thank you, Julie. Thank you for having oh, me. Oh, what you, a Frank. delight. Thank you. And uh, I'll be down again for a cup of kindness as well as Joe. <laughs> we'll gladly serve it. It's you. plenty. Thank yeah, you. plentiful there. Thank you. Yeah. Very much. What a pleasure working with you. Thank you. I loved your reading. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we are taking January off. Um, thank you, Max. Great seeing you. Debbie, thank you. Chris, uh, and Kristen, yeah. So have some Christmas cookies and we'll see you in February.